All right, scholars, thanks for tuning in. Let's take a look at some review concepts for our test tomorrow on motion. So you have this table, and we have concept, definition, formula, units, and comments. We're going to start with the concept of distance. The symbol we can use for distance is D, defined as how far something has traveled. It's always a positive number. It's just the distance between uh, two points. We can measure distance in many different units, meters, miles, feet, kilometers, etc. This definition for distance is different than the definition for displacement. The symbol for displacement is delta x, meaning change in position, defined as the difference between final and initial velocity, sorry, final and initial position. So the formula for this is delta x, change in position, equals the final position minus the initial position. Let's take a look at the comment over here. Brenda walks to the store two miles down the road and back. What was her distance traveled and displacement? Her distance is going to be 2 plus 2 equals 4 miles. Her displacement will be 0 because she started and ended at the same place. So there was no change between her final and initial position. So this is because xf equals xi. Let's scroll down to take a look at speed. And by the way, the way I have this set up is that units, we have meters, miles, feet, and kilometers. Those can be units for either distance or displacement. All right, so speed. The symbol for speed is V. And the symbol for velocity is also V. We can think of velocity as the absolute value of speed. When we think of speed, we think of it two ways. Instantaneous speed, as we measure with a speedometer, like in a car, and average speed, which is the distance something travels divided by the time it takes. The equation for calculating average speed is distance over time. This equation can be also rearranged to have distance equals speed times time, or time equals distance divided by speed. This can be described with an algebra triangle where you have velocity, no sorry, distance on top and velocity times time on the bottom. And we've seen in class how to use this. Speed is always positive because distance is always positive. You're doing distance divided by time. If distance is positive, your speed will be, t will be positive. And just think of it as speed is just how fast you're going, regardless of, of whether you're going this direction or that direction. S units for speed. In the SI system, International System of Measurement, it's meters per second. In this country, we measure the speed of cars in miles per hour. Other countries measure the speed of cars in kilometers per hour. Meters per second has an equivalent in the English system of feet per second. So these are all valid measurements for both speed, all valid units for both speed and velocity. Let's look at the definition for velocity. Velocity is the rate of change of position. It is like speed but can be positive or negative depending on direction. And we generally say that an object moving in a, to the right is a positive velocity, an object moving to the left is a negative velocity. The definition for velocity is written this way. Change in position over time. So the equivalent would be for speed, we had velocity is distance divided by time. For velocity, we're saying it's displacement over time. And we can rearrange this equation in the same way that we rearrange this equation for speed to solve for either delta x or for time. The main point here is that velocity is a vector quantity because it points in the direction that the object is moving. So that's why we have 
positive velocity going one way and negative velocity going the other way. And that becomes an important concept, especially when we study momentum. Let's go down to acceleration. The symbol for acceleration is A. It's defined as the rate of change of velocity. It can be positive or negative. The equation for calculating acceleration is V final minus V initial divided by time. We can rearrange this equation through algebra to look like V final equals acceleration times time plus VI. The units for acceleration in the SI system is meters per second square. The equivalent in the English system would be feet per second square. We can also have kilometers per hour per second or miles per hour per second. Acceleration is also a vector quantity like velocity because it points in the direction that velocity is changing toward. It is not the direction the object is moving, but the direction that its velocity is changing towards. Let's take a look at free fall gravitational acceleration in particular. The symbol that we use for that is lowercase g. Falling objects accelerate 9.8 meters per second square. We sometimes round to 10. For this equation here, final velocity, I can substitute this a for g, if something is free falling. Free fall means there is no air resistance. The only force acting on the object is gravity. There are some other equations that involve acceleration. Looking at the displacement, how far something moves during acceleration. So this equation, that we, this equation that we just did for VF, sometimes we call this equation the how fast equation. How fast something is moving when it's accelerating. We also have an equation that we call the how far equation. So this shows that the displacement of an object while it's accelerating from rest is equal to 1 half times the rate of acceleration times time squared. And I want to clarify this is from rest. If the object has some initial velocity, there is another term that would get added to this. But we're not going to get into that. So similarly, if we're talking about something that's free falling, this acceleration can be our value for g. So this is what I wanted to go over with you. Take a look at the next video where we're going to do a graphic organizer to help understand some of the basic concepts from this past unit.